Well, everyone, it's time to create a little bit of a used buying guide for iPhones. Now, I've done a few of these before, but things change all of the time. So I'm gonna break down exactly the process that I typically go through whenever I buy any used iPhone. And it typically depends on which iPhone I'm buying. If I am planning on buying like a, one of the brand new iPhones, like an iPhone 14, iPhone uh, you know, 13, iPhone 12, you don't have to look through every single little detail most of the time because if you're buying an iPhone that comes with all the accessories or it's like a, you know, even like a certified refurbished iPhone from Apple, you are pretty much good to go. You can go through Apple's website and buy a certified refurbished iPhone that way. But if you're going through third party websites, things like Facebook Marketplace or eBay or any of these other websites, there are so many things you have to look out for even before you even you know, see the phone in real life that you need to go ahead and make sure that you actually you know, prepare yourself with before you actually go and buy the phone. So I'm going to walk through exactly how I typically go through whenever I'm buying a used iPhone. The first thing I always do is I think to myself, which iPhone am I buying? In this case, we'll be trying to buy an iPhone 11. Well, I probably won't buy it, but I'll just show you exactly what I go through. So I'll go ahead and look at an iPhone 11. But if you're looking at iPhone 12, 13, you kind of have to parse it out exactly the way you want it. So in this case, I typically, honestly, will always start off at eBay. I have bought basically probably 95% of my phones from eBay. Back in, back in the day, I used to buy them on Craigslist. I have stopped doing that now. I don't want to meet anybody. I'd rather get everything shipped to me. And that's exactly what I do now. So you can go to ebay.com. There's a few other websites you can try out as well. But I typically will start off by eBay. Now, I'm not even signed in here. And I've already made a recent search of the iPhone 11. So what I typically would do is I will go ahead and look at an iPhone 11 in this case. Now the website is broken down very easily. You have your search bar up here. You have your little things if you want to, you know, kind of bring it down and kind of. But this is basically what you want to go ahead and kind of keep your focus on. In this case, you can see that there's already a lot of different, you know, products that are being, you know, kind of showcased right here. And you can already see that there's already a lot of products that are already being shown here, which is honestly pretty cool. So all you're going to have to do is kind of, you know, search through these. And usually, if I'm being honest, usually the first couple of ones will be ones that have been sold a lot. These are almost like companies that are selling these iPhones. They aren't individuals. They're just companies, top rated plus, top rated plus, top rated plus. If there's somebody like for this example, you can see that this person has 341,000 reviews and 99.1% feedback. This person probably is not scamming. However, if there's somebody who does have like one review, I'm not going to call anybody out, but if there's somebody who has like one or two reviews and like maybe even no feedback at all, you probably want to avoid those iPhones if I'm being honest. Now, if we take a look at this first one, right, and I'll go and show you, I typically don't buy these iPhones like as soon as I buy them, but the reason why some of these are so important is because you can actually just look at these iPhones and you can just purchase them. They are usually going to be cheaper than some other iPhones. But you have to keep in mind that you have to look into detail so much when buying these iPhones. Because this is an iPhone 11 Pro Max. I actually was looking for an iPhone 11. So we're going to have to exit out of this one. And we're going to now have to find an iPhone 11. And this is still an iPhone 11 sold by basically the same person. So now if we go up here, basically we're now at an iPhone 11. So $404 is pretty decent. It's not really that bad of a deal. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind, they are very different in specs. So if you're okay with buying a 256 gigabyte model and you don't care about a 128 or 64, you want to spend a little bit more, more money for 256, that's perfectly fine. I will then read this slight description here. It says it's in excellent condition. It's refurbished. This is an A stock item, so it means it's going to be looking almost brand new. You can look through some of the images. You can choose the color. But then right here, like I mentioned before, the feedback. You want to make sure you take a look at their feedback because if their feedback is bad or if they don't have many reviews, if they don't have more than like 20 reviews, I probably wouldn't buy them. But if they do have about hundreds of thousands of reviews like here, then you're probably going to be good to go. So now what you can also do is you can look through their listing. They kind of showcase exactly the exact specs that this iPhone basically has, whether it's unlocked or whether whatever the case is. It's going to show you all that information here as well as a little bit more details down here. Now with this specific case, like I said, I usually don't buy these things unless I'm just like wanting to spend a little tiny bit more money, but you can basically get a little bit of a better deal. But these are good because you don't have to haggle. They're already in pretty decent price tag and you actually will pretty much get the best customer service on an eBay, you know, seller. If you have any issues, you can return it. I've returned a lot of phones like these that sometimes I don't like or I don't need or that they're broken or something. Anytime I bought anything from one of these top sellers, they've been perfectly fine and I've loved it. However, I don't do that every time. What I actually end up doing is I go through and I click on the sort by 
and I usually sort by either the lowest price or I go through newly listed. So if I go through newly listed for an example, I will basically be able to turn oh, basically turn it from all listings to buy it now, unless you like an auction price. I usually keep it buy it now, and I just get a gauge of essentially how expensive some of these prices of these devices are. So you can see, you'll see a lot of them that are like $135 or $300. Some of them may only be for like Metro PCS or T-Mobile. Typically, you may want an unlocked iPhone, to be honest. But when you go through these specific iPhones, you can probably save even more money. So you can see before we were starting off at 405, well now you can see that this is an unlocked iPhone from a seller that has a thousand ratings at 100% rating. And this would honestly be pretty decent, you know? So this is already about a $75 difference. And what you can also do is you can message this person and you can probably let them know, hey, like I know you said, to, you know, 325, would you take 300? So you can message the seller from, by, by clicking on contact seller. And I do that stuff all, I used to do that stuff all the time. Now I kind of just buy them. But the first thing you want to do when you have an, a specific iPhone that you're buying, like one iPhone rather than like multiple from a seller like of this size, you want to take a very, very close look at these specific pictures. You want to take a very close look at the charger, at everything, all the accessories. You want to take a look at the display. Now, if they show the serial number or if they're willing to give you the serial number or IMEI, you can always type, you know, type it into like Swappa or some of those websites and see if the IMEI is clear or if there's a you know, loan on the payment or whatever. And you can see that this specific iPhone is in very, very good condition for the most part. This would be an iPhone I would pretty much, you know, if I was looking for this iPhone, I would make an offer at like 300 and see what they say, maybe even 290. But when you go like 290, they probably won't even look at it. But this iPhone would be in pretty good condition. And from there, I'll look at the price tag. I would see if I can get the screen protector. I would see if I can get the IMEI number or not. And then pretty much I would make an offer. But if we click on read more, you can see it says it's in mint condition, very low usage. Factory unlocked 100%, all this other stuff. Now, as soon as I were to buy this iPhone, right? Let's say I like it, I make an offer, they accept it, I buy it. The very first thing I would do in real life would be I would basically look at that iPhone, I would make sure it matches all of the photos that I ended up getting on that specific iPhone, but I would also take that serial number of that iPhone. So if they weren't able to give it to me over the phone or whatever, I would go ahead and basically take that serial number and I would input it to Swappa, I would input it from that direct carrier, whoever the iPhone was originally from, or even if I'm able to contact Apple about it. And I would make sure that there is no, you know, that there's no like loan on that specific iPhone. Like it's not a iPhone that still requires payments or that it has like a bad IMEI number or anything like that. Because if that ends up being the case, you're going to be stuck in a situation where the iPhone is pretty much going to be useless. You can really only use it as an iPod. I'd also make sure that all the you know ports work, that all the buttons work. I'd also make sure there's not already an iCloud account on like on that iPhone. So make sure they go ahead and like clean out that iPhone thoroughly. If there is an iCloud account signed into that account and it's not yours, you're going to have to contact the seller and let them know, hey, there's an iCloud account on here. If you don't take it off, I'm going to have to return this iPhone. If they're able to turn it off, which they are from you know online, they can do it online. Well, then that's fine. But if they're not able to, or if they're getting weird, you're probably going to have to return that iPhone because it mm, probably is never going to work for you. So. If you're able to get any more, if you're able to get the original accessories and everything, that'd be great too. But I'd also recommend putting a screen protector and case on your used iPhone that you just bought, because at that point you can also resell that iPhone in the future. And if it's in pretty good condition, you can probably recoup a lot of the money that you spent on it. Maybe even like maybe half of the money that you spent on it, you'll be able to sell it for maybe like three years later. So in terms of that, that's pretty much how I buy a used iPhone. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.